Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and a very warm welcome to Wood Green in North London. This is the first of two tours that I'm filming today. This currently is the smallest house we have in our books for sale right now. Then I'm off to Clapham to film one of the largest that we've got for sale right now. Now, if you're familiar with this part of North London, you must have seen this place on your travels. It's affectionately known as the Mushroom House, and it doesn't really take a genius to work out how it's arrived with this name. Just take a look at the outside, you'll get the picture. It's one of the most charming little houses we've had the pleasure of dealing with at a Unique Property Company for quite some time. And there's more to go into and expand on regarding the usage of this home, which I'll go, to, go into detail at the end of the video, but for now, here are the bullet points. Uh, it's a completely detached standalone house sat in its own gated and private grounds. We're right next door to Woodside Park. There are two bedrooms, a bathroom, and then you've got this lovely big circular ground floor, completely open plan. The whole thing's coming in at 714 square feet, which is around 66 square meters. The asking price is 350,000 pounds. And it's a genuine tiny home. Everything is so well assembled and laid out in here. It just demonstrates what you can fit in to limited square footage in a really thoughtful way. So, are you interested in seeing more? Let's go and take a look. Right, so we're starting off here. This is the high road. Um, we're in Haringey. Haringey is the local authority here. And that's uh, the gate to get you into the ground or the grounds for the house. And then if I spin around, there is the mushroom house. And like I said, it doesn't take a genius to work out how it got its name. It's such a pretty house. It's a proper little fairy tale cottage. Sort of thing you'd see in a Hansel and Gretel fairy tale type book drawn in. Right, let's head round to the back. So there's a decent sized garden. It's a bit overgrown. We've had a lot of rain recently and uh, things have just gone a little bit haywire for the owners. Um, but if I just pick my way, pick my way to the back of the house, give you some idea of the extent of the, of the grounds here. So this willow tree and the surrounding bushes on my left and my right here that's the boundary and there's a big storage shed up here metal storage shed and there's also a little shed a wooden one over in the uh, in the corner there and there is the back of the mushroom house so it's a decent as like i said it's a decent sized garden and uh I mean, they, the, the owners have got two children, two young children. It's put plenty big enough for them, but they have reached a point where they do need a little bit more space. So uh, they're moving on, which is why it's now up for sale. And then that's the back door from the living area, which we'll go and explore shortly inside. Uh, another storage shed there. And this, just behind this bush here, is, the, is Woodside Park. So if you need more space, you want to go out and... Uh, cycle bikes and go jogging whatever there's there's obviously big recreational grounds facilities there and that's uh, that's the entrance to the park just on the other side of this fence right let's head inside right straight in to the uh, to the main reception which is just a big open plan circular room and it's lovely really pretty lots of atmosphere uh, lots of the original or well, as much of the original character has been retained. It is grade two listed, um, but everything works. Everything's in its place, form and function. Um, yeah, like it's hard to find the words. It just, it just works. It just shows that, you know, you don't ne necessarily meet, need loads and loads and loads of square footage to actually live a very uh, comfortable, comfortable existence. So you've got the dining area here, which then picks its way and is next to part of the kitchen. A nice wooden reclaimed work surface there. There's room for dishwasher and a washing machine. Lots of handy storage and bits and pieces that can just be hung and put up everywhere. You've got these beams running everywhere on the ceiling, which are not original, but they um, obviously they look pretty. They look quite authentic and to add to the the flavour of the the historic nature of the building and then you've got your cooking area there with a four ring gas 
hob oven, room for a big fridge freezer. There's uh, on this ground floor everywhere, there's uh, a really nice solid wood parquet flooring, which I'll just tilt the camera down, you get to see that. Very nice, nice and warm. There's underfloor heating everywhere on the ground floor here. And then this is the back door that we just saw from the, the rear garden. And then to the left is the living area. Big sofa, big three-seater sofa that faces this double chimney, uh, which has got the TV mounted on the wall. But this is the central sort of pillar for the for the house. It's the main structural uh, element of the house, and it's all original. And it's a really nice old detailing here. You've got some of these timbers here, which are stuck in, and then you can see where some of the where the where the, the brickwork's been charred over the years when it's been used for open fires. It's really nice, and then workstation loads of windows hanging storage nice open tread staircase keeps it nice and light another big window and then back to the front door and where we first came in and there's the other side of the double fireplace which has got the nice little wood burner stuck there at the bottom now, this is where it gets really interesting because upstairs there are two very, very good sized bedrooms actually for what you would think would be quite a, uh, a limited layout. But more parquet flooring on the uh, landing just up here. Enough room for storage, a little cupboard on the landing. Now, this is the technically the, the main bedroom. Again, very light. These, I love all these curved windows up on the um, first floor and on the ground floor here, but more parquet flooring in here. And it's, um, it's a decent sized room. Overlooking the garden. And then just pan around and you can see the extent of the room here. And it's got another fireplace here. All the original brickwork, which is really nice. It feels very authentic. More storage there, just built in. There's lots of little thoughtful touches, as I've said already, but it's um, it just it focuses the mind when you've got limited space, and then you start to get very creative with how you put your storage areas together. And then another bedroom, second bedroom, big enough for a double bed, and window there overlooking the street, recessed for our. Uh, more cupboard space, oh sorry, drawer space I should say. And then that faces back out into the hall, on the landing. And last but not least, there is this really cute bathroom. I love this. So we've got this textured plastered wall, lots of exposed timbers, and the floor is a seal, a, a concrete screen, uh, skinned floor that's been polished and then uh, it's been treated so it's waterproof and this I love I'm not entirely sure whether this is an old horse uh, trough or not but you've got this lovely or it might just be original tin bath but it's very very nice and you've got these mixed taps and shower attachment and then on the wall a nice overhead shower And the wall-mounted sink and the loo in the corner. Okay, that takes care of the Mushroom House over here in Haringey, North London, N22. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. It's a cracking little house. The only reason it's up for sale is because the owners, as you've probably noticed on the tour, have got two young children and let's be honest, there is only so long you can live as a family, of, a growing family for in a house this size. So it's time for them to move on. But it would make a really super home for somebody who wants to live and work from, uh, from one premises. 
that's whether you're a couple or a single person but that leads me on neatly to the point I made in the intro which is basically this is for sale as a commercial property with ancillary residential use so you can live in it but you have to work from it uh, just in terms of the real finer detail if you are interested in the property and you'd like to know more please get in touch with us directly and we can uh, deliver the, the specifics to you directly you can email us info at uniquepropertycompany.co.uk or contact us via the website that's uh, uniquepropertycompany.co.uk and we'll put you in touch with my colleague Danny Brewer who is the uh, associate partner who looks after North London for, for the company. He can explain to you far better and tell you exactly what you can and can't do. But essentially, it is a commercial space you can live in, but you do have to work for it. That's it. That's the uh, that's the house done and dusted. Thanks for uh, thanks again for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. Um, and as I said, come back to us if there's any detail you'd like to particularly know. I'm off to Clapham now to film the second of today's tours, so I'll see you on that next one. Thanks again. Take care.